All right, welcome to the Vancouver International Boat Show virtual seminar series sponsored by Freedom Marine International Yacht Sales, the premier choice for exploring the passion of yachting. Thank you for joining us. The seminar will begin in one moment. If you are having technical difficulties, you can reach me, the online moderator, via the chat feature at the bottom of your screen. Questions for the speaker can be added to the Q&A box also at the bottom of your screen. We will answer these questions at the end of the presentation. Now it is our pleasure to present Keeping Your Boat Safe and Secure with Brandon Wright. Take it away, Brandon. All right, thank you so much and uh, very happy to be here. Uh, this is uh, Barnacle, Keeping Your Boat Safe and Secure. So uh, first off, who am I? Uh, I've got a fairly unique background. Uh, I'm an electrical engineer here in the province of British Columbia, a professional engineer uh, after many years of uh, university and then uh, actual uh, real life engineering. And so my background is unique in the sense that I used to develop security systems to protect the borders of countries, uh, royal palaces and air force bases. And I spent uh, the majority of my career in the Middle East. So developed systems to protect uh, the border of Qatar, Saudi Arabia, Saudi Arabia, Yemen, and had customers that included the CIA, FBI, uh, among others. And so it was a really uh, exciting job and uh, very unique for a Vancouver Island boy. And uh, here's an example of one of the security systems, just knowing that uh, folks generally like to hear a bit of this backstory, but this vehicle here would be used to remotely monitor a 30 kilometer radius around the vehicle with a radar and thermal camera and would automatically track and detect uh, intruders that are coming into the area and then allow uh, individuals to respond. So these are deployed all across uh, the Middle East, uh, across the United States and used for special events and for very high security areas. And uh, as my career evolved, uh, I got to pick some more unique projects where uh, I, I developed a remote monitoring system that helped monitor uh, Rybovich Super Yacht Marina in Fort Lauderdale. And uh, this Super Yacht Marina uh, had, has boats that are worth hundreds of millions of dollars. And they wanted to have a system that was able to track any incoming vessel that did not transmit AIS and then track that vessel in order to have footage of that vessel just in case it decided to come into Rybovich and start messing with the Super Yachts. And so um, that was a really fun system, but a, an example of what uh, about $10 million would get you uh, for a marina security system. As well, I've had uh, some very interesting meetings in my career. On the left here is uh, me with the chief of staff of Qatar and receiving an award after a successful completion of uh, developing a, a border protection system using those surveillance vehicles and uh, other technologies to help detect anyone running across the border between Qatar and Saudi Arabia. And then on the right, I uh, was presenting to the retired U.S. Secretary of Defense, William Cohen, where uh, I was presenting on how to use technology to protect a border. And uh, as a result of that, uh, FLIR, uh, well, I helped support uh, receiving a large contract with the U.S.-Mexico border for using technology to protect that border. So it was a, a really fun and exciting career that I was on there and uh, ended up having some pretty serious incidences at uh, one military base where I decided that it was probably a good time to switch careers. And uh, while all this was happening, I've, I have a Catalina 27 sailboat that's moored in Mill Bay uh, that I share with my father and uh, unfortunately, January of 2017, during a storm, she broke moorage, floated to shore and never told me. And so I got a phone call from my father uh, saying that the boat has broken moorage, she's on the beach and we got to get her off. And 3 a.m. driving over the Malahat from Victoria over to Mill Bay in the middle of the storm, managed to winch the boat off the beach with them. And it was just a nightmare. And what was embarrassing about this was for me, uh, I, my whole career is remote monitoring and protecting assets. And I couldn't even protect my own assets. So that gives you a little bit of a backstory about me. 
And uh, the company that I founded as a result of this is called Barnacle Systems. And uh, we're based uh, here in Victoria, incorporated in July of 2017. We've had some really neat soft accolades uh, within the market. Uh, we were announced as 2020's, um, one of the 2020's most innovative com uh, marine companies. Uh, we were alongside Garmin, Volvo, Brunswick, Dometic, all the big dogs in the, in the market. And for us as a small startup with no outside investment, uh, we were just really proud to be listed amongst those companies. And our mission at Barnacle is to reinvent how people check on their boats. So I'm going to go into a little bit of a more salesy beginning to this presentation where I just explain what our product is, which is a more advanced remote monitoring and security system. But then I'm going to go into more simple ways to protect your boat using locks and other types of systems to not only protect the security of your boat, but also protect the boat's batteries, bilge pumps and other systems. So uh, I'll, I'll roll through the more salesy piece of it here and then uh, I'll jump straight into providing tips. So this is the Barnacle. This is the product uh, that we developed as a result of my boat breaking mortgage uh, just about four years ago now, or actually it was just over four years ago now. And uh, this system allows you to check in on your boat remotely from your smartphone, tablet, or computer, monitor your batteries, your bilge pumps, your shore power connection, and also comes with a camera. It has built-in GPS for, geo, uh, for tracking and geofencing and has a number of built-in sensors as well. This is an example of the experience that you get with the mobile app. So you'd be able to see your boat, whether it's at a marina or in transit. And that green circle around that pinpoint is actually uh, the boat's geofence. So if you're setting anchor and you're worried about the boat drifting, or if you're worried about the boat being stolen, you can get a notification if it leaves that geofence. And then as well, we have uh, monitoring a house battery on this one, the shore power connection, the bilge pump and a door. So if any of those systems goes into an alert, you receive a notification through your smartphone and you can receive an email alert as well too. Here's an example of a vessel that's in transit where you can see the batteries are currently charging, build, build is still idle and the door is currently open. You can also review trips in the past. So if you wanted to see a track of where you'd been on a previous trip, you can go and review those trips. As well, you can see we've got some additional sensors that are baked into the product. Uh, we have heel, pitch, and impact, which allow you to monitor if the boat's beginning to list at the dock. So if you're worried during a storm that your boat's taking on water and perhaps your bilge pump hasn't been running properly, if your boat begins to list over a certain angle, you can get a notification. As well, if you're a sailor and you're interested in knowing how far over you heeled during a race, uh, you can go and review all that data as well too. The system has built-in impact monitoring. So if your boat gets bumped into at the dock, you can get a notification. Or if your boat's not tied up securely during a storm, you can get notifications from any of those impacts. We always we support additional accessories like lasers and things like that. Uh, we also monitor temperature and humidity for inside the boat's cabin. So if you're worried about mold on board your boat, you can use the built-in humidity sensor to send you an alert or remotely turn on a dehumidifier. All of the data can be reviewed and graphed. So if you are wondering about your battery charging cycles, the performance of your solar panels, or if you just wanna see how cold it was over the past week, you can do so with the graphing features of the Barnacle app. As well, the system comes with the camera and this camera takes photographs. So if a door is open, if motion's detected, you can get photos generated automatically and sent to your smartphone. All right, so that was the more salesy piece to all of this. And uh, as a whole, throughout my entire career, uh, whether it's at Barnacle, at FLIR, or doing environmental monitoring, everything that I've learned in a nutshell is that it's never one thing that will go wrong, it's a series of things that go wrong at the same time. So here's an example of a vessel that didn't quite make it <laughs> through a storm. As you can imagine, uh, what would have happened on board this boat wouldn't have just been that it was taking on water. It would have been a series of things that would have happened. It could have been that the bilge pump had failed or the batteries had died, or it all started maybe with the shore power being disconnected. All of those things are a cascade effect that can result in a boat sinking at the dock. So 
I'm going to go through a few different uh, uh, stories and different use cases for or different examples of how you can protect your boat. The first one being protecting your shore power. Now, the shore power, for, uh, for those who may not be familiar, that's your 120 or 220 volt AC power that's coming from the marina into your boat. Now, this shore power is a connection that would normally be like a large yellow connector on the side of your boat, similar to what you'd see on an RV as well, for those that might be familiar. And that shore power connection is critical for maintaining the health of your batteries if you've got a charge controller on board or other systems like heaters, uh, air conditioners, or dehumidifiers. So making sure that you have a proper shore power connection is critical. And so um, as a caveat here too, or as a, a disclosure, like we're not associated with any of these other products in any way, shape or form. Um, I've just been on hundreds, if not thousands of boats now, uh, not only doing installs of our product, but also just exploring boats. And so one thing that I've always seen that, uh, well, not always seen, but I've seen on many boats that I find very unique is uh, the smart plug. And so this smart plug, uh, I was very excited about when I first heard of it, because I was like, oh man, like smart plug, it must communicate some data, it must have some sort of interaction with your smartphone. No, none of that. All that it is, is it has these clips on the side that allow the smart plug to just connect and hold itself into your shore power connection. So one of the most common use cases for our product for remote monitoring is getting a notification if shore power has been disconnected. And now with a smart plug, you can know that the actual plug is secured and clicked in and they're actually very hard to get out. So whenever we're on board a boat, we wanna test the disconnection of a shore power. You've gotta push in the clips, yank it out, and then your shore power is disconnected. But what we find uh, is that the number one cause of boat fires is a poor connection uh, between your shore power cable and your boat. So this greatly reduces the, uh, the risk of a power or a, a fire as a result of your shore power connection on board your vessel. Next is a, a more advanced solution. Of course, this is using the barnacle to monitor uh, shore power and batteries. But here's an example of a boater that went out on a trip. And uh, we can see here that they received a notification that their shore power had been disconnected. Their ignition had been turned on. Then they left their geofence. They went on a trip. They came back and you can actually see in the graphs here over a timeline that, oh yeah, they're charging their batteries. They're out on the trip. They come back to their boat and they forget to reconnect their shore power. You can see that since they left their house systems on, their batteries slowly died. They received a notification, they went back to their boat and reconnected their shore power and recharged their batteries. So for some folks that maybe you have lithium, maybe you've got uh, uh, AGM, whatever it may be, those are expensive battery banks. And if you're gonna be leaving, coming back and you don't have a proper checklist of uh, connecting your shore power, other things like that, you run the risk of forgetting and then uh, having that battery bank be depleted. The next is protecting your assets. So this is obviously a very big uh, uh, concern for folks. And what I'd like to point out with protecting your assets, and this is more talking about theft, is most occurrences that happen in terms of boat theft, accessory theft, whether it's fishing gear, outboard motors, things like that, is it doesn't happen from land. So we've, uh, we've studied a number of different thefts, whether it was of a boat or of uh, accessories, and it's generally someone rowing in to the marina and then getting on board some boats. So they're not gonna take the traditional path where they're coming through the front gate and just knocking on the door and telling all the cameras that I'm here. Uh, they're gonna be coming in at nighttime, rowing their little boat or buzzing in on their little dinghy and then grabbing whatever is quickly available. And so thieves are always opportunists. They might see some nice Islander reels and uh, fishing rods hanging off of, uh, off of a boat. They'll just go for the quick grab. Uh, downriggers, things like that. And whether it's sailing, rigging, things like that, uh, winches, it's always important to just secure your stuff. But one of the things that, <laughs> this, is, this is always remarkable for me. I've done this presentation at a number of yacht clubs. I've done it at a number of boat shows, things like that. 
I'll walk around the marina ahead of time. And I've always joked that if, uh, if I was very bold, I'd come in with someone's outboard motor just to show how easy it is to walk away with someone's gear. Because I find that very few people actually lock up their outboard motor. So with an outboard motor, they, all the 9.9s, all the smaller outboard motors that have the little arms on them, they fold in, they've got two holes in them. And those holes are actually designed for a padlock. So again, thieves are lazy. They're looking for a quick win. If they see a padlock on there, they're likely not going to have their bolt cutters and ready to go and start doing all this stuff. They're going to just move on to the next boat and see if that outboard motor is locked. So for five bucks, you can protect your outboard motor and decrease your risk of uh, theft by a huge amount. Next is uh, the outboard motor lock, which is a more secure, it, it covers the entire um, little locking and arm system on board your outboard motor. These are generally only 25 bucks and it's very likely that someone like Steve Stin or Harbor Chandler at this boat show right now have these outboard motor locked. So uh, for 25 bucks, they're designed specifically for outboard motors and you can't even get bolt cutters in there. That outboard motor is not going anywhere. Oh man, stop stashing a key. So <laughs> we, we do a lot of uh, boat security installs here in Victoria. Uh, generally we'll outsource it. We have sales of our product in over 30 countries now. And uh, whenever we have done installs here locally, whether it's Victoria, Vancouver, wherever, we'll hear from the boat owner that they've stashed a key like port side cup holder underneath your coffee mug or a transom locker at the back. It's just on a little like uh, fishing lure that's hanging down or it's on like a stick that's tucked in on, in the gunnel uh, on your starboard side. And I, every time I always talk about this uh, in, in person where I can see people's reactions, I always see some grimacing and some, oh, like, yeah, you just nailed exactly where I stash my key on my boat. It's amazing how many boats just have a random key laying around uh, in a very easy and very common place. So what I recommend is I can't stop people from leaving a key on board their boat. I recommend that you don't do it, but if you are going to do it, just jump onto Amazon, spend the 30 bucks, spend the 20 bucks and just get one of those locking key holders that you'd see a real estate agent use or uh, or what you'd use if you're a surfer and you want to stash your key underneath your vehicle, they have the magnetic ones. Uh, just make sure that you're going to put your keys in something that locks so that you're not going to have to worry about someone stealing your boat because you left your keys out for them to do so. And then thieves hate noise. So this is for your dinghies. So there are a lot of different ways that you can protect a dinghy. Of course, you could chain the dinghy up. You can just do some basic locking. But at the end of the day, if the dinghies are just so valuable and the thing that's going to scare off a thief the quickest is noise. You could have flashing lights, you could have all that stuff, but at the end of the day, noise is what's really going to deter them. And now there are bike locks that generally you'll see for electric bikes and things like that that are much more high value, where if you cut the lock, it will send off, in this case, a 110 decibel alarm. So it'll be an ear piercing shrieking noise. And it's obviously disarmed when you unlock it properly. But if someone's gonna steal your dinghy, I highly recommend installing one of these audible locks that you can just buy from any bike shop or off of Amazon as well. And this will just give you that extra line of defense or once that noise is going off, it's very unlikely that the thief will continue to try and take your dinghy. And then obviously a more sophisticated system, uh, our system, the Barnacle, where this is actually an event where I was out with my young family and uh, I received a notification pre-COVID at a mall, <laughs> if you can believe it, and uh, received a notification that a hatch had been opened on board the, the sailboat and that motion had been detected on board. So I got the notification to the smart watch. I opened up the app and confirmed like, yep, the door had been opened. And then uh, since it's just a 27 foot Catalina, fairly small, when someone's on board, it moves around quite a bit. So you could actually see when that individual got on board the boat. And of course, I'd never learned my lesson being in a mooring field uh, in Mill Bay. 
after having the boat break merge and everything, I still left it there anyways. But um, there's certainly some unsavory folks that leave their boats out there and live on board their boats. And uh, I thought, okay, well, if someone's on my boat, I better see. And sure enough, there's a photo taken with the system automatically. And I confirmed it was just my dad getting on board, checking on things and likely raiding the beer fridge. So it was a, a non-event, thankfully, but uh, it was an event nonetheless that gave me some peace of mind knowing that the boat was safe, secure, and that we get an alert if anything were to happen. And then uh, last year in France, we caught a burglar on board a boat, a uh, large, I believe it was a 52 foot catamaran in France. And uh, this one, uh, you can see here from this image, it's a cropped and zoomed in image, but uh, the system, uh, the barnacle system comes with uh, infrared capabilities on the camera. And what I wanna identify here is to us, like we don't know who this person is obviously, and the image isn't crystal clear, and that's the same as what you'd notice with a lot of thefts that you'd see uh, that are recorded by like on the news or in the newspaper. And it's a, a relatively blurry image. At the end of the day, the police generally know who's causing problems in a specific area. And in this particular case, there was a thief that was going boat to boat and just wreaking havoc. And no one was able to catch an image of this person while on board. So the police could actually do anything about it. So, by having the barnacle on board, this boat owner who was not in France at the time, received the notification, saw the photograph, called the police, sent the image and they're like, this is great. We know that this is in progress. We know that this is actually who this is. We know who this person is. And they went and apprehended that individual. So one big thing to know, whether it's your home security system, your car alarm, your boat security system, without a camera, and without multiple ways to confirm that someone's on board your boat, the police will not respond. So if you've got a home security system where a door is just left open, you need to have multiple things that indicate to the police that something is in progress, that motion has been detected, a door is open, and a laser has been tripped, or multiple motion sensors have gone off in concession, so or in succession. So this is very important where if you're going to have a security system, you want to include a camera that allows the verification so that the police will actually respond to your event. And then very importantly, keeping your boat afloat. So this one may seem like a simple solution, but what I highly, highly recommend you do on your boat is add a high water alarm. Now this could be as simple as just adding one of these bilge switches that might replace one of your existing bilge pump switches that has this audible siren built into it. Now the bilge alert siren, you don't want to put this on the bilge that's at the lowest point on your boat. So if you're on a small fishing boat with uh, uh, like a, a small bilge pump at your engine, uh, at the stern or at your transom, this will be going off all the time when you're cleaning fish, while you're out fishing, whatever. You don't want to have this loud siren going off. If you're on a sailboat, you don't want it to be the one that's right at your keel uh, at the lowest point there. You want it to be somewhere that's more forward where if the siren goes off, you know that you have something bad happening on board. And now one trick that you could do with this, if you don't want to have this attached to your bilge pump by itself, you could just add another float switch and have it connected to this high water alarm and then mount this float switch slightly above your bilge pump. So if you've only got one bilge pump on board your boat, if you're in a, a 30 some odd foot sailboat or a smaller fishing boat, uh, you might just wanna have a high water alarm where this float switch only be activated if your bilge pump has failed. So what this will do is the water will come up above your existing bilge pump. Bilge pump may have burnt out because there was a twig that got stuck in it and it was just running for 36 hours straight and then just choked. Now this float switch, when it triggers, the siren will go off and now it's alerting your neighbors around and most of all, it will alert the marina that your boat has an issue. And I've walked around several marinas now where I've actually heard these bilge alarms going off and you can peer into the window and see like, oh, there's, there's water on board. If it's fresh water, 
that's one thing. It's likely just rainwater getting in. Uh, and that, this is obviously for the West Coast here. It was different in Toronto where if there's fresh water on your boat, it doesn't mean it was rain. It could have been from the lake as well too. Or if you're in the Okanagan, no hating on any of the freshwater boaters, but uh, here where we are in Victoria, if it was at the Oak Bay Marina, uh, we'd be looking to see if there's salt water on board. And if there's salt water on board, that means that water is getting in from, the, from around your hull, which is a worst case scenario. So um, this at least notifies your neighbors, it notifies the marina and allows someone to act on it and help you. So I highly recommend adding a bilge alarm. And then uh, obviously a more sophisticated system with remote monitoring of your bilge pump. With the barnacle, you can get alerts based on how frequently your bilge pump runs and also for how long your bilge pump runs. So it's important to know that if your bilge pump runs 10 times for only one second, that could be just as bad as your bilge pump running for a full five minutes at a time. That just means that your bilge pump's efficient and pumping out water and might be located at a very low position, but if it's just going off constantly, you'd want to get that notification. So here's an example of a boat owner. Uh, this was in Nanaimo, uh, January, man, almost uh, two years ago now, just over two years ago, where this boat owner lives uh, several hours away, four hours away from their boat. And they received a notification during the big storm that we had around Christmas time there that their bilge pump had been running frequently and then all of a sudden it started running for over a few hours straight. And so they called the marina. The marina attendant went down to the boat and confirmed that a tarp had collapsed on board the boat and was pouring water into this Beneteau through the mast. And uh, during the storm, shore power had gone out. And as a result, the batteries were beginning to die. And so with the barnacle system, they got the notification before the cat catastrophe happened and uh, they were able to save the boat by repairing the tarp and uh, patching up the hole. But the way that the water was getting in was actually through some of the ports where cables would be going in and uh, wires, sorry, like radar wires, things like that through the mast and then down into the boat. So um, that was our first big save uh, a bit earlier on in the company. And then humans will always be a factor. So I had a teaser in the description of this presentation and it's around a blue jumpsuit. So this is less about protecting a boat and this was more about protecting billions of dollars worth of assets at an Air Force base, a very actually prominent Air Force base in the Middle East. And so as I mentioned earlier in the presentation, uh, my previous career was developing remote security systems and uh, I'd helped develop this perimeter security system that included fiber optic fence detection, uh, radars, thermal cameras. So if someone jumped on a fence, camera would swing down, zoom in and identify the potential threat. The soldiers could be dispatched and head out to address the situation. And so in this case, what was very common with our systems was at the end, we'd have a surprise test. So it'd be a, a three-star, four-star general who would deploy a whole number of soldiers in different areas of the base to go and try and break in and see if they could defeat the system. And this is what we see with the barnacle as well too on boats. As soon as we do the install, someone's opening the door, checking a laser, things like that, and see if they can defeat the system. But uh, in this case, in this example, uh, during one of our commissioning where we're actually testing the system and uh, I'm, I'm on site and everything, we get a notification that there's someone coming towards the base. Cameras swing over, zoom in, and it's an individual in a blue jumpsuit. And what was unique about this is they're carrying two ladders. Thought, oh, okay, this is interesting. And uh, they're walking up. I call over some soldiers like, okay, like you guys go through your standard operating procedure. Let's, let's address this. And they're like, oh yeah, no problem. It's a worker. They're fine. Like a worker, like, is this one of your guys' tests? like what's going on like are we supposed to do something they're like no 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 it's fine it's fine it's it's just a worker like okay and I'm just watching this unfold as the workers walking in the cameras are following and they put the first ladder up against this razor wire fence so you can imagine fence like the chain link fence quite wide huge razor wire on the top they put the first ladder up against the razor wire the individual climbs up the first ladder carrying the second ladder drops 
the second ladder on top of the razor wire and then picks up the first ladder and then moves it to the other side of the fence. So now this person is inside of a military base in the Middle East that has weapons, it has bombs, it has aircraft, it has tanks, it has all this stuff, all because they had a blue jumpsuit on. And it was unbelievable to me. And so once they got in, of course, the soldiers were dispatched. They went and sure enough, it was a worker that didn't want to have to go all the way around to the main entry gate, gate, show their credentials, show their paperwork, all that stuff. And all because they were wearing the blue jumpsuit and were identified as a worker. Now, I'm sure that that's not the case anymore. And I don't recommend going up to a military base in a blue jumpsuit and seeing if you can climb a fence. But uh, it was very interesting to understand how the human factor, no matter how sophisticated your system is, if you don't take your uh, alert seriously, if you don't take the system seriously, it's going, it's going to be useless, whether it's a home security, car security, or a boat security system. And um, what I want to emphasize as well is the number one thing that also allows people, or causes people to lose confidence in a system is false alarms. So as you're looking at home security or boat security systems, you want to make sure that you can optimize all of the events, all of the alerts, so that you're not getting constant notifications that something is wrong. You always want to optimize so that you're only getting alerts when they're absolutely necessary. I've got, uh, as you can imagine, my small home here in Victoria is just littered with cameras. And uh, whether it's to watch rats in my shed or... <laughs> just watch the front door for the Amazon deliveries. Uh, I've always got these alerts coming on and I don't even check my alerts from the cameras anymore just because I don't have them optimized properly. Instead, if I were to be taking my own advice would be to only alert during certain hours of the night or other ways where if this event is happening at two in the morning, it's much more significant than it's happening at one in the afternoon. So that's some high level advice around optimizing and not always relying on the system and always being conscious of the human effect of a security system. All right, so that's Barnacle. Um, if you may have heard of us uh, as well through some of our YouTube uh, partners, through Sailing Delos, through 59 North Sailing, Mermaid Monster, Motor, Motor Vessel Freedom. Uh, we've been partnering with a lot of different YouTube uh, sailors and power boaters, and uh, we've been very excited to be supporting them. As well, we're deployed on a, a couple dozen uh, Canadian Coast Guard vessels. So we're very proud to be approved for use on board some of those vessels. And uh, we're also uh, protecting Harbor Patrol vessels with our product. So it's been a very fun ride uh, for four years now at Barnacle and uh, very happy to be here at the Vancouver Boat Show. I just realized that I still have the Toronto Boat Show <laughs> link up here. But uh, if you visit our virtual booth or uh, if you go to barnacle.io slash boat show 2021, uh, you'd be able to get some more information about the product. Well, let's update that right now. Oops, there we go. Just like that, solving problems on the fly. So if anyone has any questions, I'm very happy to take them now. All right. Thanks very much, Brandon. If anyone has any questions for Brandon, be sure to drop them in the Q&A box at the bottom of your Zoom screen there. Um, while we're waiting for those to come in, is there anything you wanted to add to your presentation at all? Yeah. So there's always a few questions that I expect. And so uh, here, let me just uh, crank this open again. So we get a lot of questions about how much the system costs. And so for a basic boat monitoring system uh, with the barnacle, with a camera and shore power monitoring, you're looking at about $2,000 all in. That includes an installation. I put everything on the high end. So if the system takes six hours on your boat uh, at $120 an hour, you'd be an extra 720 bucks on top. So you'd be looking at just over $2,000 for a complete package. Uh, if you wanted to have wireless door sensors and shore power monitoring, so more of a security system, in addition to monitoring, you'd be looking at more on the $2,500 mark. And the install duration is the same amount, simply because with the security side, everything's wireless. So you're not having to run wires to complicated places. And as well, uh, if we don't have any questions yet, uh, 
the installation of the product, whether you're on a small sailboat, large sailboat, trawler, or a fishing boat, generally all of your 12 volt systems are in one location. So you're gonna have your main breaker panel that also has your bilge switches. This could be at your helm, it could be at your nav table, it could be somewhere on your boat uh, where it's just all clustered together. So for a DIY installation where you're doing the install yourself, you can expect that you're running wires maybe six feet. And then the longest piece that usually the last two hours uh, is usually running the camera cable because it is a wired camera. We find that folks uh, are always standing and humming and hawing, drinking coffee, drinking a beer, and trying to figure out where they want to put the camera and then running the wires to that. All right, we have a few questions coming in here from the audience. Um, is there a monitoring fee? Yeah, so we have a global cellular connection with this product and our boat show special is actually the first year free, but it's $300 per year. And uh, this fee uh, gives you the global roaming package of this cellular based device. So if you cross the border between uh, Canada and the United States, so you're going down into the San Juans, there's no overages and there's no roaming fees on this. So it works out to be about $25 per month, $300 per year. All right, next up, uh, does it need a Wi-Fi at the dock or cell service otherwise? Yeah, so the SIM card is built into the product. So if your boat's at anchor, the system's still fully functional. Uh, for me, with uh, we've got a little 14 foot power boat that uh, gets my six year old daughter, my wife and I, out to Sydney Spit and to Russell Island and Salt Spring and all those different places. And if I'm ever dropping anchor, I can go on land, set the geo fence, and then just walk around and be able to see exactly where the boat's left. So with that cellular connection, you don't have to worry about connecting to a Wi-Fi. Um, as well, we're gonna have an Iridium connection here and uh, we're probably gonna be launching that publicly in the next two months. We're currently testing it right now, but if you're going up way up into desolation sound uh, into sort of the deep bowels of it, uh, you can switch over to satellite so that you can get notifications that way. But uh, right now we find that through the Broughtons, through the Broken Island Group, through desolation sound, uh, there's surprisingly good cell connectivity up there, whether it's 2G, 3G, or 4G. All right. Uh, suppose I'm mostly concerned about security in the home marina. Can Wi-Fi substitute for cell cellular monitoring? At this point, we do not support just the marina Wi-Fi. The reason for this is we've learned. So when, when I first built the product uh, four years ago, it was only Wi-Fi. And it was such a nightmare to deal with Marina Wi-Fi, whether you have a splash screen where you had to log in and then the Marina Wi-Fi would go down and would kick you off. We've gone with cellular simply because we can provide really good technical support where if you have a, a connectivity issue at some random Marina in Mexico or France or Florida or wherever, we can troubleshoot all the way down to the cell tower and help get you back online. And also, when it's a security system, and as I know from my background, you want to get that alert if there's an active event in progress. So if you're relying on a, a crummy Wi-Fi connection, I can't reliably tell you that you're going to get that notification. So we've gone strictly cellular to make sure that you're going to get the notification when you need it most. All right, that looks like all that we have for the time being, but we still have some more time here. If you have any more questions, be sure to drop them in the Q&A box there at the bottom. Uh, Brandon, you've done this a few times and you did this at the Toronto Boat Show as well. Are there any more frequently asked questions that you see coming up a lot? Yeah, um, one question that I've had periodically is whether I uh, do these presentations at yacht clubs and things like that. And the answer is yes, especially with it being virtual now. I've done one for the, uh, the rowing club already for Royal Victoria Yacht Club. Uh, what was it? West Bend Yacht Club. But uh, if anyone out there is part of a yacht club that's interested in having this presentation done, uh, I'd be happy to do so. It's free of charge, of course. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's one question that we get. Let's see. Uh, what else? Uh, the product is made in Canada. It's actually manufactured in Vancouver. So we designed all our own circuit boards. 
Uh, we designed all our own hardware, the injection molding, uh, the, the actual cover of the product was designed by a uh, Dyson engineer, the one that helped design the fanless uh, Dyson fanless blade thing uh, the <laughs> that uh, you see at Canadian Tire and all that. Um, so he, uh, he had his Midas touch on uh, the enclosure. So you can see a nod to Dyson in terms of the colors and the facets and, and things like that. All right. That's awesome. Um, yeah, I don't think we have anything else coming in here, so we might wrap it up early. Uh, but Perfect. is there anything else you would like to add to your presentation before? No, I'm I'm happy. I hope everyone uh, enjoyed the presentation. Oh, looks like uh, I just got a notification. Perhaps there's another question. Yeah, we got one more here. Um, I might have missed it, missed it, but does the enhanced system include other sensors such as temperature and build? Yeah. So uh, the barnacle itself has all of those sensors built in. So you can monitor up to five bilge pumps, four battery banks, one shore power connection, comes with a camera, has the temperature, humidity, barometric pressure, pitch, heel, and impact all built in. So all those features that I discussed, those are all included with the product. And then the mate, the barnacle mate there, the only thing that that's providing value for right now is uh, for the wireless door and window sensors. So you can add all wireless sensors with the Barnacle Mate. And lastly, we're gonna be uh, announcing here shortly to the public, in addition to satellite, is our connection into the NEMEA 2000 bus, or NEMA 2000, uh, if, you're, uh, if you pronounce it slightly differently, but you'll be able to get tank levels, engine RPMs, uh, water temperature, wind speed, wind direction, things like that into the Barnacle app as well too. All right, we have another question here. Uh, where can we get it installed on the island? Do we have to come to Victoria? Nope, uh, so uh, if you're up island in Comox, uh, we've got certified installers up there, Port Alberni at Port Boathouse, uh, Parksville Boathouse. Uh, in Nanaimo, we've got, uh, I think it's Moose Electric is the one in Nanaimo. Um, yeah, I, I don't know if you wanna elaborate on where on the island you are, but uh, I believe that we've got 13 or 16 uh, different locations on the island where the product's both sold and installed. Is there a place that people could go to find all of those dealers? That's a great question. Yeah, that's on our website at barnacle.io. So here, I'll just uh, go back. That's a good point. So yeah, if you just go to barnacle.io uh, slash dealers or just find our dealer list on there, uh, there's a list of all those. And then if you're interested in purchasing a system, uh, I know that Steveston and uh, Western Marine are both advertising it at the boat show right now, uh, as well, Port Boathouse and Parksville Boathouse are selling it through the boat show as well. And then our first year free of the subscription, uh, that covers anyone that you purchase it from, you pay for the subscription during the installation. So you don't have to worry about uh, asking them about the, the deal, uh, that's applied when you're activating the unit. And if they were in Campbell River, is there somewhere? Yeah, close? yeah, in Campbell River. Uh, let's see, is it Ocean Pacific, I believe, is uh, the folks out there. We've got a number of uh, installs that have happened out there. But if you, if you would like, uh, you could send me an email or through, uh, through this boat show link. We have a schedule a demo button. And uh, I'd be happy to connect you with, uh, with our installer in that region. And that goes for anyone else listening, too. Uh, if you'd like to have a personalized demo and we chat about your boat in particular, uh, we've got a team here that would be happy to, to help and I'd be happy to help design a system optimized for your vessel as well too. All right, another question here. Is there a base unit available without the camera and what would the price of that be? Yeah, yeah. So uh, we do have that offering. Uh, let's see here. The appendix is always the most thorough part of the entire <laughs> presentation. But yeah, so the barnacle without a camera is $1,095. And um, if you have a fleet of boats as well, uh, we're getting installed on houseboats and uh, on fleets of sailboats and fleets of small fishing boats. Uh, you can receive dealer pricing and uh, other discounts if you have a number of boats. Uh, I know that without a camera is important for certain situations where you just don't want to have a camera on board your boat or, or maybe it's illegal. Yes, and here's a more comprehensive breakdown of the prices for all the sensors and everything. All right, perfect. And I think that might be 
it for now. Do you want to put your contact information back on the screen there? Absolutely. So if anyone at home watching has any more questions, they can get a hold of you there to continue that conversation. Absolutely. And perfect. Is there anything else you want to add today, Brandon? No, just very happy to be here. And uh, I'm sad that I can't see everyone in person, but uh, yeah, no, it's just great to be at the Vancouver Boat Show. And I hope everyone's having a great day and uh, enjoying their time wherever, wherever you're staying warm right now. Perfect. Thanks very much. That was a great presentation. Uh, again, I want to thank Brandon Wright for his time here today. And I want to thank you all at home for joining us as well. We are interested in your feedback, either on this seminar or if you have any ideas on topics you'd like to see us cover in the future. Simply click on the Evaluate tab located just above the seminar description to complete a form. And after the show, all attendees will also receive a post-show survey, so be sure to fill that out. Uh, you can also check out all of the features here at Vibs Virtual. Uh, if you have any questions, check out the info booth for some answers. And I hope you all enjoy the rest of your day at the boat show. Once again, thanks, Brandon. Take care. 